What's up guys, we are back. Um, today I'm gonna to be talking about how to mod your EcoBoost four cylinder, um, specifically the 2.0 and the 2.3, because those are the ones I know the most about. Um, so what we have laid out here is a graph of the stock limits of everything and uh, what to do to get past those limits. So a stock, I also got a new pointing device. Uh, I'll show you what this is from after the video. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty torn up. Um, but back to it, um, the 2.0 in stock form with stock tune, all the, the stock bolt-on parts like the intake, exhaust and everything, you can expect to make about 220 wheel horsepower. Um, all of these power numbers are rated at wheel, not crank. Um, crank's different and doesn't really matter because you might put down different numbers. Um, with bolt-ons, a 2.0 can put down about 280 with a good tune. Um, you might need an ethanol blend to get to that number. I've made about that on a Focus ST with a stock turbo um, and stock internals. Um, next up, you'll hit the stock fuel system limit. You can't get to this limit without an upgraded turbo. The stock turbo is rated at the, the 280 horsepower mark. Uh, but at 360 with an aftermarket turbo, you're gonna run out of fuel. Um, the ways to get around this are either upgrading your direct injection, um, so that's a upgraded high pressure fuel pump and upgraded injectors, or going aux fuel, and that means to put a extra fuel rail with extra injectors before the head, between the, between the head and the intake manifold, um, whereas the other injectors are almost internal to the block. After your stock fuel system limit, you'll hit the limit of the EcoBoost engine, um, or the internals, um, mostly the pistons and the, the ring lands. Um, if you're pushing this kind of power, the 400 to 425 mark, you'll start to crack ring lands. This isn't a guarantee. I've seen people push up to above 500 horsepower on the stock pistons and be fine for a little bit. Um, but the 400 to 425 mark is like the safe place to stop. Um, after that, you should probably look at building your engine. At 500 horsepower, the cams have are limiting you. They are not flowing enough. You'll have to upgrade the cams. Past that, around six or 700 horsepower, that's with a, a bigger turbo, a built motor, everything, you'll start to run into issues with the block. Uh, you'll start cracking the block. Actually, the camera is sitting on a cracked block um, that I'll show you afterwards. Uh, so at that power level, what we need to do is sleeve the engine and go for super high horsepower. Um, people have done it, even the 2.3 guys, they'll swap over to the 2.0 blocks to shoot for that number. On to the 2.3. So the 2.3 in stock form will make about 260 wheel horsepower. That is rear wheel horsepower, not all wheel, because the 2.3 the also came in all wheel drive applications. Um, but for any of you rear wheel drive guys, 260, stock number. With bolt-ons and uh, a tune, you can expect to make 300, maybe a little bit more of 350. Um, depending on how aggressive you get with the tuning. Around 400, we will hit our stock fueling limit and also start getting close to the limit of the block at the 450, 500 mark. The 2.3 blocks are open deck, whereas the 2.0 blocks are closed deck, so they hit their power limit much earlier. They, they have floating sleeves, basically, um, which is not great for making big power. It's great for cooling, not great for big power. To make 700 plus, which is possible on a 2.3, um, you have to swap over to a two liter block with the 2.3 internals. So basically a stroked out two liter, um, a two liter stroked to 2.3. Uh, with that, you can also put the 2.3 head on because it flows slightly better than, well, I shouldn't even say slightly, it flows quite a bit better than the 2.0 head. We've gone over the limits. Now let's look at how to get past them with different turbo options. These turbos are all Garrett turbos. Um, they're more expensive. There are other options out there, and I'm going to explore some of the other options on my car. But this gives a good idea of what different power levels you can shoot for and which turbos are good at those power levels. Um, again, these are all 2.0 specific, the, the power ratings that is. You'll make slightly more on a 2.3, not a whole lot more. It depends on if you're running into the limit of the turbo or if you're running into a flow limit. First up, we have the Garrett 2860. This is an older turbo. Um, it's also affectionately known as the Disco Potato. 
This turbo will net you 325 to 350 wheel horsepower. This is the perfect turbo if you want to stay on stock fuel system. It has really quick response, it's really quick to spool, and it won't hit that, that uh, fuel limit at 360. You can make your 350 and not have to upgrade anything else. Going up from there, we have the 2867. I ran one of these on one of my old Focus STs. I made 404 horsepower and like 401 wheel torque. Um, they're really quick to spool, um, slightly slower than the 2860, but it's not a noticeable difference. Um, the 2871 is about the same spooling characteristics, maybe a, a little bit slower, but you can also get a little bit more power on the top end. The 3071, we're moving up to a larger frame turbo. Um, we can make about 450 on the 3071 and 450 to 500 on the 3076. Uh, moving on to Garrett's newer options, the G-Series, uh, you can expect to make about 400 horsepower on a G25 550. The 660 will move you up to 450. Going up to the bigger frame on the, the G660 of the G30 660, we'll get up to about 500. I actually ran a G25 660 on one of my old Focus STs. Again, I went through a lot of iterations of that car. Um, the G25 660 on my engine put down, I think it was close to 460 wheel horsepower. Moving up from there, if you want to go for crazy power, you'll be looking at a G30 770 or even higher, um, something up in the G40 ranges with uh, over a thousand horsepower capability. Um, but most of you guys probably won't get into that and I might not either. This right here is the old 2.0 block from my Focus ST. Um, as you can see, this one has seen some use. We have a crack the whole way down the cylinder liner up through the water jacket into the edge of the block another one crack on this side through it to the water jacket what caused this failure uh, i'm pretty sure was a leaky fuel injector on my aux fuel setup uh, the injector leaked into this cylinder and caused a hydro lock situation which forced the side of the block out that's why i don't really want to do a aux fuel setup on the mustang I'm probably going to do an upgraded high pressure fuel pump and upgraded direct injectors. It's a slightly more expensive route to go. The aux fuel is about $1,500 for a, a full send four port aux fuel kit, whereas the upgraded HPFP and injectors is between $2,500 and three grand, depending on who you want to go through. That is it for this video. Stay tuned. I have some more parts coming in for the EcoBoost Fox do some interior upgrades that I think you guys will like. So uh, check out the next video whenever it comes out. See ya.